I greet you all in the name of Jesus, and I want to welcome you to River City. My name is Innocent, and I'm trusting God to bless you. I've got a few questions that we're going to try and answer this morning. How do we survive difficult times or difficult seasons? How do we maintain our expectation when going through tough times? How can we cultivate a faith that stands the difficult times? How do we abide with expectation? I'll be looking at the book of Job. And I want to start by reading Job chapter 42 from verse 1. Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. You asked, who is that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen, now and I will speak. I'll question you and you shall answer me. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. In the book of Job, we see quite a few dialogues. We first see God speaking to Satan. Then we see Job speaking to his friends. Towards the end, we see God speaking to Job. And in all these dialogues, there are things that we can learn and apply to our lives. The verses I've read are from the latter part, when God is speaking to Job. God, Job is answering God in chapter 42. He's saying, you have spoken, now I understand God. You ask that who is he that is obscuring my counsel or my plans without understanding? If you read chapter 38, you actually see God asking Job those questions. And he goes on to say, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? One of the things we see from this dialogue is that Job realized then that God was 
a supreme. He was superior in everything that he does. And he says, I've said things without understanding. I've uttered things without understanding. I've heard about you, but now my eyes have seen you. One of the peculiar things in this portion as well is that Job had asked God lots of questions. If you read the earlier chapters, he's concerned about his welfare. He's concerned about things that were happening around him. And he was asking God questions. God did not take any time to try and answer him. But God said to him, you have been asking me questions, but now you listen because I'm going to ask you some questions. Throughout the whole book, God doesn't respond to Job's questions. He actually just asks him some questions here. It's always interesting, and we need to realize that God is supreme. He is superior to our ways. He knows what's best for us. The seasons that Job went through were really trying times. And I think if we were to go through such seasons ourselves, we would be in a lot of trouble. The Bible talks of them as job-like seasons. These are seasons that we go through, that we don't expect, that are not desired, that there is even no explanation on why we are going through those seasons. I often think that life at times is understood by looking backwards. There are things we said when we were on the other side that when we are where we are now, we, are, we see them differently. And we say, now we understand why we went through those things. How many times some of us have missed out on a job promotion, on a job interview, and we went home crying about it. But later on, you say, thank you, God, for blocking that job for me because you realize things are different from where you stand. My topic is called Recommended by God. And it's a question because when we talk about being recommended, most of us, we think it's only good things that people can recommend about us. But let's look at Job. The Bible says he was a man who was blameless, upright, and he feared God and shunned evil. What a man. When you read the first chapter, this is what is described about Job from that book. A blameless man, an upright man. But God comes in and he's talking to angels and Satan was there as well. Mind you, Job was not there. He was not at the discussion table. He was just going on with his life. He had his children, he had his animals, he had his wealth, he had all those things just doing life. God speaking to Satan, he says, have you considered my servant Job? And the devil says, if you read New Living Translation, he actually says, yes, but haven't you put a hedge around him, around his home, and around his property? If you take that hedge off, I tell you, he will curse you. God says, I'll take the hedge off, you do what you want. One thing we realize here is that God has put a protection around us as his children. Not just around us personally, but he has put a protection around our homes, around our properties. And the devil was moving up and down and tried to pull down Job, but he couldn't. Why? Because there was a hedge of protection around Job. Do you realize that as we move down, up and down this world, there is a protection that we have from God. And there are things that God protects us from that we don't even understand, that we don't even see, that we are not even aware of, but he's protecting us from some things. He's got a hedge around us. And God says, have a go. Job went in, took the servants away, took the wealth away, killed, had the children killed. And when messages were coming to Job, the Bible says it was actually a messenger, one after another, bringing bad news. 
It's like they couldn't even wait for the next person to finish before they bring the bad news about the next event. And that's how the devil works. When he's trying to discourage us, he brings one thing after another. And the reason those things were coming one after another, the devil was trying to make Job feel exhausted, tired, weary, and give up on God. Do you know that the things that you are facing now, the things that you are going through in life, the devil is only desiring to weary you down. As I read through, it came to my mind that, well, the devil was not so much after the children of Job. He was not so much after the wealth of Job. He was not so much after the servants of Job. He was after Job because he said to God, if you take that edge away, he will curse you. He wanted Job to curse God. Would it be that the things that you are going through, the devil just wants you to curse God? Would it be that the things that you are going through with your children, with your spouse, at your workplace, in your finances, would it be that the devil is just trying to weary you so that you curse God? But we see here that God had so much confidence in Job. A lot of Christians are getting tired or weary because of the things that they are going through. And it's my encouragement to you this morning, wherever you are, that you be encouraged because the devil is just after you so that you deny God. One of the things that gets the devil confused is when we continue to worship God irrespective of what's happening around us. When we continue to be true to our call irrespective of the situations we are facing in your health, in your finances, but you still stand and say, God, I love you. Job comes in and say, now I've seen you, God. I've seen you in my calamity. I've seen you in my adversity. I've seen you in my situation. He says, my ears had heard about you. You know, there are times we know more about God. We know about church. We even know Bible verses. We know friends from church. But at times we're not seeing God in our lives. Job is saying, I knew all those things. Remember, he was true to God's ordinances. Every time his children went for a party, he would sacrifice to God and say, God, maybe my children have sinned against you. So he was true to the things of God. But he's saying now, I had heard about you, but now my eyes have seen you. Life teaches us to rely on God. When he saw God, he saw himself. That's why he comes in in, in chapter 42. He says, I've said things that were utterly foolishness. I've said things without understanding. But now I have seen you. I have seen your wisdom. I did make judgments against your counsel. I did say things against your plans. I did say things because I lacked understanding. But now that I understand... I ask for forgiveness. I ask that you forgive me for saying such foolish things. I have seen you. A singer by the name Andre Crouch, he sang a very good song. I love that song. He says, I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There's been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation... God gave me blessed consolation that my trials come to only make me strong. And he sings, through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust God. He goes on to say in his last verse of the song, I thank God for the mountains. I thank God for the valleys. I thank him for the storms that he brought me through. Because if I had not known that I had a problem, I wouldn't have known that God can solve them. I would not have learned about faith and what God could do if I hadn't gone through those problems. Then he goes on to say again, through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust God. 
a singer by the name Travis Green. He sings, he, God made a way. He says, he made a way. When our backs were against the wall and we thought it was over, he came in and he made a way. Do you know that God has got it all figured it out for you? We now know from Job's story. In chapter 19, verse 25, he says, I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another. That's a statement of expectation from Job. He says, I know that my Redeemer lives and he will stand on this earth. Then he says, after my skin issues, maybe you are saying, after my finance issues, my marriage issues, my health issues. He says, I will see God. That's a statement of expectation. That's abiding in expectation. Therefore, we can agree with the writer to the book of Romans who says, we know that all things, in all things, God works for the good for those who love him, who are called according to his purposes. We agree with David when he says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He says in Psalm 27, I would have lost heart, I would have fainted, unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on God, be of good courage, he shall strengthen your heart. Wait I say on the Lord, as I finish uh, this sermon, God is encouraging us to have faith that acknowledges that God knows it all. God is encouraging us that he is God who is supreme. He knows what's best for us. He sees the, the beginning from the end. The things we're going through, God has already seen those in our calamity, in our places of pain, in our places of adversity. God is saying we can see him and we can say to him, we won't obscure your plans. We won't distort your counsel for you know what's best for us. And I want to encourage you that we can have this opportunity to thank him for the things that he protects us from, things we don't see things we are not even aware of, but he is busy protecting us, putting a hedge around us. As we come to prayer, I just want to encourage somebody here. Maybe you are going through tough times. I just want you to know that God's counsel is supreme. God's counsel is the best. Could it be that God is just wanting to show off your faith, your stand to the devil? God loves you and he's got a way for you. Little did Job know that towards the end of that chapter, God was going to give him double of everything he lost. The Bible says he gave him children. And the Bible also says he gave him wealth. He gave him servants. And he died in a very good old age. I encourage you, don't get weary. Don't get tired. Maybe there are so many things coming one after another. My encouragement to you, don't grow weary. Don't, grow don't be exhausted. I'm going to pray with you. Shall we close our eyes wherever you are? Raise your hands where you are. And I'm going to pray with you. Father, I want to thank you in the name of Jesus. I want to thank you as we've learned from the story of Job. That you've got some protections around us. A hedge around us. Thank you for protecting our lives, our homes, our properties. Father, you have been faithful. There are times we should have died, but we haven't died because you have protected us. There are times we should be in hospital, but we have not been in hospital because of your protection around us. I want to thank you, Lord God, for that hedge around us. I want to pray as well, Lord, for my brother and my sister. That brother who is almost giving up, 
my sister was asking questions. Why me? Why God? Why are these things happening to me? I want to pray, oh Father, that they be encouraged from this story, that we can stand in trust and in awe of your, of your will of our, li our lives. I pray that we be encouraged from Job, that we can stand even if we don't understand. That we can say, after all these things, we will see God. We will see God. I thank you, Father, for this morning. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you so much. And I do hope you come back to join us in one of our sessions again at River City. Bless you. Amen.